and welcome to That Shakespeare Life. I'm Cassidy Cash. We're going to be talking about perhaps the most surprising use of whiskey that you've ever heard of, and that's how whiskey was being used for making gunpowder in the 15th century, right now on That Shakespeare Life. origin of the word whiskey? Turns out we have Scotland to thank for not only the drink we know as whiskey today, but the word we use to describe it as well. The earliest record of whiskey on paper happens in 1494 with a reference to aquavitae and the exchequer rolls. This phrase aquavitae is the Latin version. In Scottish, it's actually called uskiba, uskiba? I think I'm doing that right. My Scottish is so bad and I apologize to the entire country of Scotland, but here's how it's spelled. And basically the anglicized version of the Scottish word uskiba is whiskey. And that's why we call this this today. Now in Shakespeare's lifetime, they called it aquavitae. And you'll see this phrase show up at least six times that I was able to find in time for this video in his plays. My most favorite one coming up in Romeo and Juliet when you see the nurse calling for aqua vitae. Well, she does that because whiskey was used medicinally, uh, legitimately, okay? People weren't like calling for whiskey when it wasn't really. It was it was considered a medicine, almost on par with what you'd think of as cough syrup today. It was had a wide range of applications that they thought whiskey could treat. And so that's why she's calling for it, her aqua vitae in that part of Romeo and Juliet. But the whiskey was also the source of a huge amount of interest, including a great deal of illicit smuggling of Scotch whiskey in particular, that was happening in Shakespeare's lifetime, but under the title of aqua vitae. Now, this was happening for not just Shakespeare's lifetime, but centuries before. The intriguing thing about whiskey is that in addition to being popular as a medicine, it turns out it was also popular as an ingredient for making gunpowder. And the exchequer rolls that tell us that it was being used in Shakespeare's lifetime as aqua vitae and way back in 1494 before Shakespeare's lifetime is the same exchequer rolls that shows us it was being used for gunpowder. How is that, you ask? Well, to find out more about how whiskey was instrumental in the field of firearms and artillery, as more than just liquid courage, we spoke with Rosie Wilmot of the Scotch Whiskey Association in Edinburgh, Scotland, and here's what she had to say. So I didn't actually know this was a practice until I started researching this. So thank you for the question, because I found it absolutely fascinating. Um, so what I gathered is that James IV, who was the King of Scotland between 1488 and his death in 1513, he was quite an innovative chap. He was very interested in alchemy, among many, many other interests. Um, so he had a collection of a number of cannons for use in his army campaigns, and um, he used to lay siege to his en enemy strongholds. And aquavitae turned out to be an essential ingredient of the gunpowder. Um, it was used in what is known as the corning process, uh, basically to wet the mi mixture of, of saltpeter, charcoal and sulfur. And then the mixture was then rolled and left to dry and became a, pow a powder. So that famous record that we talked about earlier that was deemed to be the first reference to Scotch whiskey in, in 1494 was in fact by order of King James IV, um, which suggests that the Aquavite was purchased from Lindells by the royal household not just for consumption, but also possibly for use in gunpowder manufacture, um, presumably for its, its volatile qualities. I don't know about you, but I had no idea that whiskey was so useful to this King of Scotland. And it just goes to show that you always have to dig deeper when you're evaluating the motives behind items like the exchequer roll. Items that look like someone was throwing a big party might actually be preparing for war. If you would like to hear the rest of our interview with Rosie, where she shares some history about the first aqua vitae coming to England, as well as more information on the alchemical and medicinal applications of this drink in the full episode with her, you can check out the back catalog on Patreon. This episode with Rosie is part of our entire 150 plus episodes now that we have available on Patreon for our patrons. And this is just a snippet from one of those. Now, in addition to being able to hear the entire interview, patrons also have access to the bonus show notes that go along with Rosie's interview, including more archival images and some museum artifacts related to the history of whiskey and whiskey in Shakespeare's lifetime. And you can find those things by logging in using your Patreon credentials on the CassidyCash.com website. So if you would like to dive further into this, you can sign up 
up with us at patreon.com slash that Shakespeare life, or you can just click the link below this episode to go directly to Rosie's interview and sign up there on our website. Either way, we'll get you to the rest of the interview today. But that's it for this week. Thank you for listening. I'm Cassidy Cash, and I hope you learned something new about the Bard. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.